This is John Paul Rye. I'm coming to you from Tokyo, Japan. Got an article here about Joe Rogan. And if you guys don't know Rogan, he's a pretty big YouTuber. He's also the former host of Fear Factor. And he's got quite a few million subscribers and he's a very big podcaster at the moment. What happened was he's moving over to Spotify. And at first glance, it looks like, okay, I guess he's making a good deal. Gosh darn, he's got like a hundred million contract there. But the thing is, this guy from this article thinks that he's actually getting the short end of the stick. And after reading this and thinking about it, yeah, he could be right. There's only one winner in the deal between the podcaster and the music streaming giant, he says, and it's not Rogan. Daniel Eck, the CEO of Spotify, just closed an exclusive deal with Rogan to move his show, audio and video, to the Spotify platform. If the numbers are to be believed, it's a steal of a deal for Spotify. For 100 to 200 million, they secured the largest podcast audience in the world. I'm not exaggerating. Spotify's market cap jumped from 3 billion in the 24th hour after the news of this deal broke. The market saw what Rogan missed. Spotify took his oil. What he means by that is sometimes there will be a farm and under that farm will be an oil well. And a company, a corporation will come along and offer the farmer, you know, a pretty juicy looking deal and the farmer will take it not knowing that under his farm there is billions in oil. That's the example that he was referring to here. So the thing is, the Spotify deal gives him about three to four times what he's making on YouTube, which is estimated by this article here at about 64 million a year. So seems good, right? Well, we'll give you 100 million a year for three years, and wow, you're making like 40% more, something like that. So at first, it seems pretty good, and I'll admit, I wasn't thinking about it, and I felt, yeah, all right, seems pretty good. I can see why he's doing it. But on closer examination, Number one, he lost control over his audience. The magic of podcasting is that it's free, open, and decentralized. Like email, when you have an audience, subscribers, you can reach them directly at any time without any middleman or algorithm, Facebook, Google, etc. getting in the way. You own the relationship. So yeah, that's a great point right there that he makes. When you're a podcaster, subscribers are your currency. They are what make your podcast valuable. By doing this deal, Rogan gives up control over a subscriber relationship and any new audience he builds from here on out, he loses. His existing podcast feed will likely die as most people eventually unsubscribe due to inactivity. If he goes back to being independent and ditches Spotify in three years, he has lost all of his new subscribers during that time and some of his original subscribers as well. So he won't lose all of them, but he'll lose probably the large majority. I mean, if he really likes somebody, and they leave a platform, you look them up, you Google, you type in, oh, Joe Rogan, you find out where he went, you follow him. But he won't just, like, get those people back easily. And not everybody can just automatically follow him onto his next platform. It takes a little footwork on the audience's part, which obviously usually doesn't happen. So he also makes the example here about how it will be like Disney licensing their Disney Plus content to Netflix, where Disney pays them one shot, huge, but then, after that, there are less returns. And make no mistake, Joe Rogan is a business. As I said in my last post, were he to build the level of advertising and subscription revenue I think he is capable of, his corporation would easily be valued at over 1 billion dot dot dot, maybe more, I guess he means. Two, Spotify gets Rogan's reoccurring revenue. Like the farmer, Rogan didn't realize he was sitting on oil he didn't value it, which is the example I made before where there's something right under the surface, there's gold you've got in the business, but you don't quite realize it and someone kind of buys it for a very, very cheap price and not filling you in how much it's really worth. So he also compares Joe Rogan to Howard Stern. Now Howard Stern was absolutely huge back in my day in high school and college, but what happened was he moved to a satellite radio format. Stern also had some issues with the FCC and radio content and things like that. But, you know, I think, yeah, money was the main reason. But what happened was, not everybody went over with him. He got a pretty good audience at first going over. But over time, people just kind of lost interest in Sirius. And it's not what it was. So, naturally, he shrank with that. And now Stern gets less than 1 million listeners per podcast when he used to have, I think, in the tens of millions. So, moving over to Sirius really, I think, affected him 
negatively. And what he's saying is the same thing is going to happen to Joe Rogan. He moves over to an exclusive platform, which is probably going to offer like premium stuff and bonus deals and things like that and eventually cut down the main content for free listeners. And over time, Joe is going to lose a lot of his audience. And yeah, he'll probably always be big, quote unquote, but making this deal is probably going to move him from like a upward pattern to a plateau and then slightly downward pattern. So, you know, this made perfect sense to me. I found it interesting. You guys let me know what you think down below. I'm not sure who is a Rogan fan on this channel. I like him. I see some people come around here and say he's wrong about a bunch of things. Maybe because it gets very political and he just states his honest facts. But I got no problem with him. I think he's fine. Let's put it that way. And I did like Fear Factor and I wish some certain people were on Fear Factor, namely Kathleen Kennedy. Amber Heard would be nice. That would be like a dream team. Amber Heard, Ryan Johnson, and Kathleen Kennedy on Fear Factor. I'd definitely pay to see that. Maybe not a subscription, but yeah, one time shot. Anyway, if you subscribe, you'll get videos. It'll be great. If you don't subscribe, well, I'll be sad, but I'll move on. See you next time.